For our next project, we're going to create a page that uh, looks and functions very similar to what you see here. And this page over here has a couple different elements putting it all together. Obviously, it needs its HTML for the content. We have CSS, strictly external CSS, that is providing the style for the page. And if we kind of click on things a little bit, we see that there is some functionality here. And that's actually driven by JavaScript, or specifically a JavaScript library known as jQuery. And jQuery is just a framework of uh, JavaScript functionality that's kind of put together for you to make life just a lot easier so you don't have to build every every very common function uh, for yourself. Uh, for example, just scroll scroll down and scroll up, a pretty common uh, function that people like to use, but if you're actually to sit there and have to build that for yourself every time, well, for one, it's it's a lot of work and a lot to know how to do if you've never done it before and as a result of that it kind of alienates a lot of people from being able to bring that type of functionality uh, to their projects especially if they don't have a background in uh, like programming and object oriented object oriented programming and all, all the concepts that kind of go with that so just as a quick overview of what you're looking at and what we're going to be working on for the next uh, a uh, little while is for starters we have at its at its essence is its HTML which is a uh, it's an unordered list of sorts it's in that same family but it's called a dictionary list and if we look at it without any of the JavaScript or CSS enabled this is what it's going to look like the actual just a simple HTML document and if, just looking back at the code I mentioned that we're going to be creating a a dictionary list and the HTML tag for that is DL and DL is very similar to a UL, an unordered list, or an OL, an ordered list. So the, the, the DL HTML tag kind of uh, wraps up each each of the elements in there and, and each element is kind of made up of, of two different HTML tags. You have the TD which is the dictionary term and you have the DD which is the dictionary description and if we're just looking at this code right here we see that the first term I have is usability and then we have the actual definition or the description of that um, of usability that term so when we look at it this is what it ends up looking like this is this is the default browser styles that it applies to it as usability is over here it's indented a little bit the the description so visually it kind of looks uh, like it's the same element and if you kind of go down we see what I used uh, for these these over here are h2 tags this is the h1 you know obviously headers and we have some links and all that here now I'm gonna turn my styles back on and let me actually disable the JavaScript on here and I'll give this a refresh so this is what it's going to look like with everything except the JavaScript enabled. And if we look here, um, this is just the styling. You know, I made a, a little about div container over here that has a gray background in my picture on there. Um, I have just a background. Now the background is a small picture that is just repeated over and over. So it ends up looking like if you want to look closely at what it looks like, it sort of looks like this. I mean, it's just a repeating background that's just meant to be a nice lightweight image for the background. Um, whatever, it's not the greatest image, but it's, it's what I put over there. And what we have here are um, some minimal design, you know, I just have the term actually underlined and I change the links up a little bit um, and it kind of goes, you see how it, this is all, again, all CSS, right? Um, the fact that this is a little bit indented. There's also, if you look closely at my at my header tag, you may see a little bit of a of a shadow effect going on over there. That's the uh, tech shadow effect, uh, by a CSS tech shadow effect. All right, so that's what it looks like with the CSS. And now once we re-enable the JavaScript, I'll give it a refresh to get this going again, all of a sudden 
some things happen. Well, first, I'm going to refresh it again, but kind of keep an eye on what happens. See, it sort of fades in. Now, that's one effect that jQuery provides for us. I kind of, I kind of have the whole page fade in a little bit uh, when it's loading up. Obviously, the top part over here has a little scroll effect that when you click on it, it reveals the author, me, and uh, a picture of me, but I like to keep that hidden. What we end up with as well, you could see that this container that has all our terms has it's it's gray in color but if you notice it's 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 a gradient right it's lighter up top than it is down at the bottom over here and actually that kind of gets a little more amplified when we uh, expand this see how how this part got much wider and this got longer and also you should note that before when we had the JavaScript disabled uh, all of the rows were the same color. Well, I, I used a jQuery selector. Um, I think it was it, it must have been odd, right? Because it's selecting the first one. So what I what I did is I made it apply a different class to every odd container, every odd um, not container rather, every odd uh, dictionary term and dictionary description. So it kind of gives you a visual separation. I mean, if I didn't do this with jQuery, I'd actually have to put all that information inside of the uh, inside of the CSS, or rather, I'd have to make a, a inside of the HTML every other term I put in there. I have to make another class for it, which is a total pain in the butt because that that would mean that um, I mean, for example, I, I didn't put these in in alphabetical order. I put them in the order or I found them in the book. But if I wanted to insert a new term in between like the Java and the uh, CDN, that means that I would have to change it, whatever. You know, you know what I mean. I'd have to change every other class I associate on there, which is not what I want to do. I'd rather have this happen programmatically. And that's exactly what jQuery is going to do for us. So again, this is a very brief overview in the following t uh, videos. We're going to actually describe the... Um, specific techniques that were used to do this from both the HTML, the CSS, and obviously one of the most interesting parts is going to be our JavaScript.